What a record, but one, yeah, as they always, you know, the first one's always on. But, you know, like you say, it's, it was time to move on, and, and you, next thing we heard from you was uh, Morning Sky, I believe. Right. I um, hooked up with Sugar Hill when we released the Hillman album. Right. And I talked to Barry Potts, uh, still actually part of the Sugar Hill family, and uh, I love that label. I love Barry very much. Great guy. And um, he, he did an album, uh, Morning Sky, which pretty good record uh and i was really getting myself back and on my feet again and almost felt like i was starting over so that one came along and jim helped me on that he did a good job material wise he picked some pretty good songs and, uh, then we did another one which i liked even better was desert rose oh, and great. that was the very first uh inkling of what was lying in the future although at the time i had no intention of starting another electric band that's the last thing i wanted to do uh, but it just happened, and that was after the Desert Rose album was done, and we had the greatest players in the world on that record, and they were all working for really not a lot of money, because all those Sugar Hill budgets were very small. Oh, sure. But, gosh, I had Bert, James Burton and Ronnie Tutt, Jerry Shep, all these great guys, and um, in the interim between that record and when Desert Rose started, I did a couple of gospel things, and I had a little acoustic band with uh, Al Perkins and Bernie Led from the Eagles and Terry right. Shep, and that was a great band. We did an Al gospel album, which you probably can't even find, called Ever Call Ready. I'm still working. Yeah, David Mansfield's on it. David went on to become a really well-known film uh, scorer, and, uh, music supervisor, very good musician, great band. Uh, that was just a sort of a fun project to do, and, um, and then... Uh, uh, Herb and I and uh, uh, John Jorgensen, who I met through Bill Bryson, who I also had worked with in a acoustic quartet, we went out and opened for Fogelberg on a tour, and then things happened. John was pushing us to plug in again, so we tried it, got J.D. Manus, and uh, bang, it started up again, and only it was really good. I had a running, true love. Yeah, we had some really good chart success and had a lot of number one singles and you know and it was uh, quite a I never expected that and it was quite a feeling to hear me singing on a number one single on country radio I oh, was, yeah. wow what the heck happened here so that was fun that was a great band we had a long run that was the longest I'd ever been in a band up until 1990 right right 92 92 um, but we got to a situation where our shelf life had expired in a sense of national. We were right caught in that cusp of uh, Garth Brooks had just come out, Billy Ray Cyrus had come along, and everything was changing. And all of a sudden, all the stuff that was really interesting, in which I include Desert Rose, the O'Kanes, Roseanne Cash, Rodney Crowell, Kathy Mattea, all of it was not getting on the radio right. anymore. And all of a sudden, this big change came over country music, and then we were. Through the 90s, it was dismal, right. and it still is dismal. They don't quite understand it, but with the exception of people like Alan Jackson, who I like, I think he's very good. And there's some really good ones out there, but you know, like the early Judd's records with Mama, Mom, and Nao, uh, Mom and Winona, you know, but they right. were making great records. And uh, the O'Kanes and all that stuff in the eight, late 80s was great music. Oh yeah, and Nitty Gritty Dirt Band was doing good stuff. It was good stuff, you know, and and. Um, and uh, once again, it just changed over. So we retired. We didn't break up. We didn't quit. We retired the band. And we weren't getting on the radio. And, and consequently, our, our stage... And we, I, I was basically tired. I'd, at that point, been on the road for almost 35 years. I went, that's enough. I took okay. a, a real uh, look at my life and what everything meant. And I, I opted to stop doing that. You know, I just couldn't do it anymore. I'll figure something else out. There so we are. Next thing you didn't you didn't have anything out to what, nineteen ninety five? Uh yeah, what was that? Ever call ready? Was it ever call ready out in ninety five? Uh huh. I thought that was earlier. Well that's what it said on the books, but I could Oh okay, I think it's earlier. Probably ninety four. Maybe. I thought Ever Call Ready was way back before Desert Rose. I think it was. Well maybe they re released. Eighty eighty no it was, I'm positive because Bernie and I were working together. Okay. I had out in 95, let's see, now wait a minute. And Baker's Chris and Herb, Bakersfield Bound. Right. That was a good record. Oh, that's an excellent record. I did Hurricane, that's my solo one. I did um, 
Then I started on the Out of the Woodwork. Out of the Woodwork. Uh, which the third one is coming out probably later this summer or early fall. That'll be the last record of the Out of the Woodwork bunch, which is Tony and Larry Rice, Herb and myself. Now that's still going to be on the Sugar Hill, or is that that's rounder? A rounder. And and now what's in the future is Herb and I will be doing a duet album similar to Bakersfield Bound, but a little more emphasis on the more original material and other kinds of material, but it'll be done in the country duet style. Um, we will be doing that hopefully starting in the next